Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Evolve with Titans, where we connect and converse with the best of the minds in the industry. The idea behind this show is for me to dive deeper and pick their brains and understand the recipe for success and creativity. Today's Titan is like super sensational personality. He's an independent musician who is also working in Tamil film industry. But what's phenomenal is the Castless Collective that he has steered to success. Castless Collective is a revolution by itself that has nurtured and brought to light so many talents like Arivu, Isaiwani and many more. It's very hard to contain Tenma in an intro box. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into the conversation. Let's hear from the man himself. Thank you so much uh, for accepting to come here, Tenma. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Omar. Thank you for inviting. Such a great title, but... Uh... <laughs> no, you are. Uh, so, we always start with this uh, journey. Mm. Um, but uh, I also want to uh, connect your uh, journey in your childhood to your uh, thing. Is there anything that connects? Uh, have you ever thought about it? Hey, because I was doing all this, I'm doing what I'm doing right now. I suppose uh, at some, some point... Um, I don't know whether there's some... It feels like a different life at times. But also, this is the time I've been very truthful to my entire... Like my art as such. What I saw when I was a kid. What I went through when I was a kid. When it's being addressed right now through my songs and through my work. Um, I feel the most, um, most honest right now. And that's why I think I'm able to um, sort of like... Like, my art, it seems to be connecting with a lot more people now. Uh, I am, uh, they are also associating me with the art and they understand what I bring to the table. It's all, so that's the, that's what I feel is the connection. Otherwise, if you look at it, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing, I was lost. Uh, it, I want to sing. I want to, moon uh, am like, I'm photo to moon to the moon. I was very uh, uh, entertaining and but the thing was I was one thing was very clear toward uh, like whether it's a musician or whatever I, I had one goal of entertaining people mm -hmm. like I wanted to entertain people and but at the same time I didn't want to cry or I didn't want to I just wanted them to feel uh, that that complete uh, you know and being in ecstasy in that art and so that give is, that yeah, give that ecstasy in that art, no? Like, that's what I wanted, um, I wanted to, I wanted to be an entertainer. And honestly, I wanted to be an icon. <clears throat> and I'm still in the pursuit of that. Uh, and the and the goal, which is the, everything else has been built around that. But uh, an amazing point you said, right? <clears throat> this is when in my entire life, I feel honest with myself, right? And as an artist, I can so relate to that. Um, what, why, are, why it took us so long, um, is it from, is it because the way we were, uh, you know, brought up or is it the surroundings we were in um, or what is it? Because I also feel the same thing. Mm. I had so many confusions and so many, I was like, not myself and, and only now, for the last few years, I feel so creative one. I, I couldn't accept I was a creative person for a long time. Um, but r very recently, I'm like, oh, I am creative. I, I am an artist, mm. right? I have I have that belief and honestness very recently. So why do you think it is? I think through these years, it was conditioning now. Mm. Like you're made to think. See, the thing is, I, I, I was very, um, like at school, I was one person, in college I was one person, and in college it was the maximum American culture influence because I was surrounded by a lot of people who were very influenced by musicians, who were mm -hmm. very influenced by blues and the other and you know, we had like one or two videos where we had to learn, like, we in the guitar class or piano class, but to actually play, you needed to understand um, the, you know, you need to have some proper like tutorial videos, like master class videos to actually develop. 
ஸோ இதெல்லாம் பார்த்து அவங்களோட லாங்குவேஜ் அவங்களோட இதுன்னு சொல்லி அந்த ஒரு கண்டிஷனிங் போயிட்டே இருக்குது கான்ஸ்டன்ட் கண்டிஷனிங் அண்ட் தென் நான் இது இந்த ஒரு எக்ஸாம்பிள் சொல்லுவேன் ஸோ வி வி கம்யூனிகேட் இன் இங்கிலீஷ் அண்ட் இன்கேஸ் யுவர் பேரண்ட்ஸ் லைக் ஸ்பீக்கிங் இங் தமிழ் ப்ரடாமினட்லி ஓன்லி தமிழ் அண்ட் யூ 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 சி யூ you go to school and one day you're late and they ask you to bring your parents and when they speak in tamil you you're embarrassed inside right mm. and then it's i almost feel it's it's that breaking of that conditioning that that you know that prejudice and all of that i i actually felt that you know uh, you know like while i was where i i i was the embarrassing bit of people mm. you get it so i was the embarrassing bit of like with friends or you know like you, this guy doesn't know anything this is like constantly you put you get put down and i was getting ostracized but uh, what i was getting really upset about is that why do i need like why do validation. i need validation forget validation why do i need to be you to be me mm. so that was irritating me and why do i need to go to a bar to drink to negotiate a deal no i don't need to i can we can meet outside because one thing is uh, like i didn't want to Uh, on on the on those terms on those yeah. uh, terms it was just we are because i couldn't afford to buy that alcohol the most of these deals were like 700 800 rupees you get on beer i couldn't afford that and i didn't want that and i wanted to my my ban fee was at that time like 5000 6000 if it went 2000 3000 for, for that night to sp- spend to spend, get a deal then it doesn't even make sense profit no business sense so i was getting like <coughs> really worked up but what happened was i traveled to london i lived in london about one and three quarter year i understand about myself like i um, because i i studied in sort of a multi ethnic college it was a, like very restrained uh, or pan uh, sorry one 12 people 12 13 people only but you understand where they are coming from and how they are dealing with it and you understand that these are just the social conditioning which you belong which your geography mm-hmm. demands you which your geography has sort of like taken over it takes a long time for an artist i feel like for na- for, an, for if you don't have guidance it takes a really long time for an artist to understand that localization is the most important thing to understand where you're from and translating your art the because the other things are just skills and craft yeah. but uh, see it, it's like this it's like yoga you know it's a brown person is needed same way a guitar white person needed but the translation can be different the mm-hmm. way the white person is doing yoga can be completely different uh, the way a brown person plays guitar can be completely different but it's your honesty and your art has to come through that mm. why do you have to do that how do you have to do that there are so many like if you take like uh, like these carnatic kacheris or anything there are white people performing there are other people people there because they've understood this culture and they're trying to you know evolve so same way we need to understand that and we need to understand who we are yeah. and get into one sort of like bargain we should bargain within our conscious about the art and then deliver it so that's what i feel like why it took me this long is because i didn't have proper guidance mm. i didn't have like a mentor and i had to see with the castes collective that's what happened it cracked me because i was in a very successful band but once that broke i needed uh, I, and i consciously broke it because i was not feeling myself mm. and i was not in that uh, i was not in the space where i was creating anything i was creating but i was not honest uh, honest honest there was no honesty and people hated me for that people hated me because i just like dismissed an entire but i had like uh, you know i don't want to complain about what happened with those projects and all but i didn't there was no connection and people uh, i was sidelined and i was just like okay forget it why what do i need to do i need to do something which makes sense to me which na- makes sense <coughs> to this to what i am as a human being um so that's when the scars is gelted when i got back it was again because th- by this time i've traveled to london i've traveled all over got educated everything suddenly come back um i was although i was doing tamil independent music that sound of that parai sound of that katamolam satti suddenly just started connecting with breaking you. my brain connecting and suddenly my art is shifting changing directions even when i do uh, do even like a jazz track now there is that 
element of that inside me which is dictating what I should do. So then it started, uh, the translation started, being, started becoming easier and my art started becoming more me. It's me. The more you localize, the more you globalize, right? Correct. The more you localize. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, we are constantly on that pursuit in photography. We are, uh, we are taking, you know, the, the only thing that I tell myself is, how do we package this for a global, global uh, media, right? Um, so what keeps Tenma busy now, right now? What, what are the things that you are working on right now? Right now, it's Nachatharam uh, Nagayagaradu. It's on top priority. Uh, that's, uh, I think, Ranjit's sixth film. Um, so that is my uh, main project right now. The other project is that um, it's been a while since I mentored uh, <coughs> folks. The last time I mentored was uh, the Casters character. And then I, I, I think after a point, they, they started becoming individuals. So I disconnected from uh, them. And now I took in a bunch of old uh, people who have worked with me before and new uh, folks to sort of collaborate and um, build an idea, teach them. Mm. Uh, it's because I think um, uh, consciously, I, I want them to n not depend on somebody from a privileged society to constantly depending on, you know, for them translation, for for everything, they need to understand. So I teach them English. I teach them um, this. I've been doing it privately. It's the first time I'm saying it out loud. So from what um, you're talking, right? I, I feel there is there is a quality in you where you want to cure the pain, right? Like fix the fix the the pain. There is something there. Um, what is what is the source of it? Where does it come from? It's me only. It's all that what I went through and I didn't want that to happen to anybody else. Because it's irritating. See, if I, if I walk into a room, it's very intimidating to look at me. Because of my size, my facial features are too scary. And you now think, I... You think people get intimidated by you? They've told me some hundred times. People uh, get, you know, they're, they get scared to work with me. And like for a long time, and they think I'm like, you know, like trying to kill them or something. Like just, just that I have a very intimidating face. That's an accused, like, it's like an accused face. Oh, I don't it's, feel like that. <laughs> no, no, but that's what they keep saying. That's oh. the constant word oh. that I've heard while I was growing up. And I was getting really irritated. I was like, so my face, like, look at my art. Mm. And that was one thing. The other thing was like the outcomes of this, right? It, like... You know, like you don't get into certain things and people judge you instantly. That prejudice is there. Mm -hmm. However woke they are, like for them, it's that for everybody, it's at first glance what they see, what they understand. But very few people, like I've seen in my life, who don't take the judgment on the first day, they take it eventually. But they take it, not even a judgment, more like an analysis report. Like report, this is who you are, like that sort of thing. But that is also fine. What I get really worked up about is that they, it's that prejudice and I see I've been ostracized like caste discrimination has happened to me, class discrimination has happened to me, all of these things have happened to me in the field of music, in art, in like and I didn't want that to happen to anybody else and I made sure the caste is character itself, the, the guys didn't face what I went through like I like they've like I've performed with people who are like very uh, like who, who openly said things to me mm. and uh, the worst was once why are you working with somebody like this uh, like somebody's parent is telling the son why are you working with somebody like this why don't you find somebody of your social capital and it puts me in on it kept putting me in a place of like vulnerability and it made me very angry like then I, when will people accept me when will people accept me and then like if somebody like me from moderately a better uh, situation, um, you know, doing this and not getting the same opportunity or getting prejudiced, getting judged, getting all of these things, you, like whatever work I did, um, if if that project dissolved, like one of my projects, like I worked on for three and a half years, it dissolved completely, and if they, I was not even like recognized for that project, mm -hmm. for many years still date I don't get. I get like very small percentage of recognition. But the problem is, it's like 
the comments which came is like how do you feel when it's not happening to you how do you feel that you got sidelined they keep like triggering me even now mm-hmm. but it's just that i'm like okay okay fine let it go because that was my contribution i feel that 3 and 1/2 years or 4 years of work what i did was my contribution to the independence scene is my investment mm. so and i'm telling you i wrote the plan for independent music i was like next 4 years this is what's going to happen i wrote an ecosystem plan and in that plan um in fact like like there was this mr x has to come and solve and uh, because like at that point i was like as an independent musician i was like you know i didn't want to fight with the film industry mm, mm, mm. Uh, it's not like i was like give me an opportunity uh, it was more like we need to figure out how to work work, work with them because there's no point being uh, making one person the antagonist and protagonist when it's a system when it's a story or a novel it's fine when it's a system you need to figure out how to how to work together so in that zone i you know i wrote on mr x one cinema industry person has to understand um counter culture three four months later and i started this thing called madras indi collective it was for people like me who are ostracized constantly who are judged one day i invited like 30 people of my friends and like friends of friends and like some all of that connection and just told them like hey guys i'm doing this thing called madras indi collective uh, just turn up i didn't know what i was going to do i just said <laughs> because i i used my previous you wanted to build that community build that community for everybody so i i i brought in people from various different sections like a privileged part of society watched a performance of art which was not there uh, are coming from a privileged yeah, background because they had their years had to break mm. then i realized it's a thought which had to uh, break because I, there's no point convincing these people like oh you have like i can't go and like go to go and speak to people and like say one tirvanmur and adyar section to sit and listen to one cnr or like you know uh, you know somebody like that somebody uh, like an independent artist mm. and i couldn't do that so it i had to take the charge and be like force things to happen force it to happen just kept forcing forcing then eventually like there's this line on tamil yennam pol valke that's what happened that person that which i told you mr x was paranjit who who called me i didn't I, i was not seeking for anything he called me he said let's do something like this you know with the caste culture and that happened and like when i when i saw like what that spark that my first one hour conversation with him i went out i was like okay we are going to change the independence is ready. <laughs> we are uh, we're going to change the independence scene. everybody be prepared it's going to be a wild ride so we sat we worked out the plan um i you know like every day for like 20 days i was like taxing the caste character because that was my thing because i was in a group where people like me are there there the and same pain yeah is- like okay i share the pain and i was crying on stage because i was like i'm finally performing the songs and 20 days i was just like i was writing these songs like a maniac like i was yelling blasting i was just like the most ruthless band leader <laughs> because i i was telling them i was convincing them that guys we we are going to fight a monster the the monster which has been like an ecosystem which is ingrained that this art these people cannot succeed cannot even take charge of anything so i was just i was drilling it into their heads like arivu isaiwani muttu balachandar everybody i was drilling it like satti kattamolam were ostracized instruments ranjit asked me to use those instruments and i was like the first time they getting on stage and i was uh, i was like drilling it in their head that we are not this is a war we are going to face a war be prepared we are you are guys you guys are soldiers i'm your general so we are going to do this in 20 days people broke cried we had lessons morning political lessons evening music class uh, like in between this practice every single day on a loop no food nothing we and like we'll forget actually it's not even the ranjit kept providing they stopped doing that but we we kept going you know this we were, is almost like a uh, upliftment through or a positive intrusion you know it's very because the thing is i couldn't i can't do this like because most of these guys are from the gana scene and they are they, they got used to that whole ecosystem so it's bringing gana musicians out of that to understand rock music to understand hip hop and not just gana it had to be like uh, like an arivu who comes from arakonam 
I had to sit and uh, you know like tell him that hey listen you are going to change the scene because you are the poet who this this world has pushed away mm. it's not you alone you you are the Represent, outcome of a thousand yeah. poets who have been ostracized so you better be prepared for something uh, you know you're going to have battles you're going to have challenges at the same time you're going to get rewards but you have to sweat blood for that and that's what we're doing so that when that pain came when i got on stage and when we performed like i think it was like when we performed talewa when muttu sang because it's the first time you're hearing a voice like that with a guitar mm-hmm. okay and it was just i was just like i was just like complete okay, and then yeah. i knew my pain was that like my first bandaid was put sorry darling you <laughs> it's a long answer but what like because the great question is just like uh, it's it's that pain which i wanted to um you know i didn't want that pain to continue but um, honestly i have a question uh, um, now that you're you are arrived now that you're here and uh, um, now that you are in this uh, journey to be an icon um is it a good thing to for art um to have like the source of pain to is it a good thing to uh, have art start from pain i think that's very subjective mm. because a uh, lot of people said like i had i said this one line on ted uh, tedx it was like art comes from intense suffering mm. uh but i think that is just me but that doesn't have to be everybody it is um, so i was also because it's a bass player i watched a lot of most of the master classes which i videos which i got are black bass players and their music their everything just um, for me connect yeah and because their conversation wouldn't cross without like finish without a martin luther king or a malcolm x and i was like who are these guys then you understand i understood mary periyar malcolm x everything in this angle that sort of thing given but that doesn't have to be with everybody like mm. i've seen like amazing work uh, honest and truthful work from privileged artists also but that doesn't make them any way less or that doesn't make me anywhere above we are here to deliver something to make people see art the the importance of art is that every single time it came in it changed the thought process for social evolution mm. right so many more people yeah so everybody needs to be it doesn't matter whether you're upper caste upper class lower caste low nobody everybody is important everybody every truthful person is important for for a revolution to start and an evolution to sustain so i want to go back to that 20 days or or the period that you were um, you know training these people right um, generally for creative people there are a lot of blocks and especially when when you are working with kids like this who who will sh- who, who shared lot of blocks like you had right lots of pain what was the thing that you followed to bring them out every time that they get blocked by that thought because it's 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 the most um, disturbing thing for an artist right like getting into the mental block and like ah i can't can i get out of it can i get out of it right um did you feel that did you feel those mental blocks yeah. how were how were you able to get get them out i guess it was um, see first thing as a as a person uh, like you grow from one one category and then suddenly you are put in the center stage there is so many things you have to fight personally art is one side but then this internal war is another thing right internal block is another thing as a band leader what did you do to help them get out of it it is a lot of uh, music history a uh, lot of that story like uh, black history which i mm-hmm. taught them about either bob marley or like curtis mayfield the whole civil rights movement was one thing which i did that was the political classes no no this is just my while we were doing music doing, okay that was happening but to shake them up it was it was but i don't think everybody should use my method it mm-hmm. is a method which works for me and i will not give that method to anybody because it is it is very it we had a huge responsibility from my the pressure also there's a method to this madness actually there's huge pressure mm-hmm. uh, because like one is even if you do one slight mistake right 
it will affect ranjit and the 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 politics of what he stands with stands for and the amount of people it it is a it's a chain reaction mm. and i and, and also it's it will push back uh, it'll, it's 10 it's, steps back yeah so every single i had to crack this because it was caste skeleton was 15 20 steps forward suddenly the after thing but to get that to get to that place i had to crack them emotionally mm. i'm like how long how long are you going to sit and listen to this and i had to blast yell and i had to like great we are not we are not going to um, bend down we are not going to like uh, there is no we, that's what i said no it's, it's a war it's like an army only it had to we have to have discipline you everybody has to write every every day at least like one song they should be able to write now like see i've put like challenges like i'll put task like if you make a mistake five rupees <laughs> like that you had to then you start becoming disciplined now i don't do that but that discipline starts coming in and you understand and you had to convince them it's like when bob marley says emancipate yourself from mental slavery it is to even tell the them not just me i was also learning because it is unlearning i had to break away all to that social conditions i had to be like hey this is my thing here on this is who i am deal with it guys were there any rituals that uh, you gave your all your group members um, to specifically work on to get get them out of this or anything no like it's uh, it's simple when you like if if they say that you are this and if they ostracize you go stand in front of them do not move assert 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 as much as you can do not bend down do not the thing was even the folding of the hands right like if just where does it come from it is like why should you fold your hands just just let it let free like when it, when i'm talking to somebody they'll be like anna like do not do that to me okay. do not do that <laughs> break free from yourself do not like no shackle should hold you back like every you have to let go when you get on stage like practice like this line right practice like you're the worst perform like you're the best like i had to gr- drill that into their heads because i got used to that and i decided this is the thing here on and that those are the things only it's 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 that mental slavery mental blocks because you should understand that empathy i the only thing was they you they've had this before people have pushed them around these these gana at satti molam and all if, like it happened when the whole practice and all was happening if you put that outside a t-shirt people will be like like it's one you know like um, okay let me tell you the everything you know saw gondo riya like that okay and imagine an instrument has a caste uh, label <laughs> on it <laughs> how, how how instrument has a caste uh, uh, marker on it the person has how the music has a caste now mode. to break a satti player thinking that into saying like hey screw you man like this is also an instrument this is also like a guitar it's to convince him that his instrument is as important as anything is as equal to anything so breaking it's to break that to to answer your question to there's no literal ritual anything like that it is immense uh, like just breaking free from your mental slavery mm. because people don't accept it like like both like the privileged and the underprivileged will not accept that everybody's in a prison only everybody's in a prison it's the it's breaking away from the getting out of the prison only once you get out of the prison you cannot be caught mm. so what is the world um, i still don't noticed really what is the evolution of gana that uh, the world has still not noticed in your in your mind gana or independent music itself i think gana um like i think as far as gana is concerned the world hasn't noticed that it's the only genre in india which can compete with like bollywood cinema and all i'll tell you why the numbers are ridiculous oh until see, the economy was brilliant uh, with independent music all of this privileged musicians when you say independent music itself is like on guy with a guitar right for a long time it was now it's changed now independent music means anybody can be it can be a gana artist also a folk artist that is because of the f- last multiple varieties coming out yeah but the last four years of work yeah. which you've done to change the thought process it's yeah. it's social con- it's like a huge sales pitch to society that hey it's not a guitar anymore so 
basically the privileged uh, section of the independent music um, have the worst terrible uh, economy. Now is it? Forever. It is crap, but they will never accept it. <laughs> <laughs> because, see, like, the thing is, it's like, oh, I will not play like this, bro. If they don't pay me this, I won't pay this, bro. Uh, that is one thing is there. And they will not maintain any professionalism. No, like, uh, you're trashing the room, trashing this, trashing that. Everything will be there. With the Ghana scene, these guys are performing 20, 30 gigs a month. Okay. Death, wedding. They will say, like, from birth to death, they are there. 20 gigs a month they will perform on average. And the numbers they will rig up is like, um, like first time when these guys are telling me, ah, in the part 1 million, where is this 1 million? <laughs> where is this 1 million coming from? See, the society, North Madras, and like say Pallavaram also, and few other places, the people are supporting it. So, if you are uh, like, if you are rational and sensible, you will get out of Ghana, you will look at North Madras and the economy around it. Okay, oh wow, there this is, is a beautiful is, system. Yeah. It's a, like there is no, like you can't say like, these Ghana artists are like, uh, not, I mean most of them are broke. But a good size of Ghana artists are wealthier and than all independent musicians, privileged mm -hmm. independent musicians, mm -hmm. they'll have house, car, everything just by performing Ghana. One Ghana will be like it's some. A, it's an amazing point, um, but also, I um, is ten like uh, is your organization or your group doing something um, to make them understand, realize that there is this economy and there is this or oh, there is this power that you guys hold, and uh, so. Um, we are in, living in an era where anything you do, any types of art, you do photography, design, um, music, Ghana, anything that you do, you um, also need to be a good salesperson, good marketer, good community builder, good, so many things, right? Um, so what are the steps that you're taking to make them, nurture them in these other things? So, um, I think it was uh, first, whenever any artist, like, I don't, now it's just, I've come to a position where it's not just Ghana artists anymore. Even yeah. playback singers, mm. uh, to the playback singers, or everybody comes to me for some sort of like advice or anything. I think it's the first thing I'll tell them is, go, the, if you feel stuck, go the exact opposite direction. Mm. It might be really stupid, it might be really weird, but go to the opposite, try it out. Even if you fail, it's totally fine. But just go there and see, if you feel like, you know, when you're growing up, uh, most men would not like backstreet boys. Okay. Because of, you know, it's a group of men trying to sing these very... Uh, because of labeling. Cringe, whatever, labeling. Labeling, cringe, pop songs, whatever. But eventually you think about it, like if you think about it as like, when I think about it as a music producer now, I'm like, oh wow, what a great act. But it took me so many years to understand that that specific angle. So, so to, to, to anybody to help them is first... Go to the opposite end. Even with Ghana artists, I'll tell them, like what I do the MIC only. It is confusing people. It is confusing the thought process. It's because confusion leads to unlearning. Mm. So I, I confuse them where I'll be like, ah, this is there, that is there. But then Ghana artists, most most of them when they come in, I'm like, hey, you have a great scene. We need, it's a, a what do you say? It's it's a very informal economy. Right, so you can build that economy. Now I'm trying to see if there's some sort of system which can be built around this. Mm. So everybody, there's like an association, somebody to help. Because with the independent artists, we cannot sit and do that because everybody's got an ego, everybody's got some sort of opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, but like the opinion, if it's like, opinion is like, give me attention. Every, that's every artist, yeah. like, give me attention. Like, but here it's like, let's work together because like, this is what Timberland said. Uh, if you want to be good, you, you, you have to, you know, you if you want to go, be good, just go alone. If you want to be great, go together. together. So it's about building unity, building mm -hmm. people together and building that system together. So that's what I keep in them. And the other thing I would say is uh, perform a genre which you do not like. Like Ghana artists, I'll tell them, try cinema. 
sing cinema song because i can't just tell them go and sing a rock song because in most of my school dropouts english would be yeah uh, hurdle so but now like some of them sp- like like i'll i'll write some english lines translate some gana songs in english so it, at least by singing you can like learn the as as phonetics is concerned so okay so that's what we'll try to do and we'll tell them the value that what they bring and explain what like uh, a pop song does so then they understand okay we are not so different actually we just this, this label only is making us this um see already uh, like songs songs like enjoy enjoy me and all that we are slowly getting into global hmm. global scene right um what do you think the near next 2 3 years um future of like independent music especially the 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 music that you are working on i think this uh, for 2020 this year is going to be a lot of we are going to fight with each other <laughs> like last year we are going to fight with each other because i think it's it's also healthy mm. uh it's it's a comp- it's not fighting literally battling physical fight and it's just competition is going to increase and i think that's a really good thing um more music producers are going to come in more artists are going to come in and my if things go well if you know if we have the right amount of money next 5 years at least one grammy will come for the scene oh that's what i, I completely mean within the next 5 years one grammy for somebody i don't care who it is because that is uh it can be like a, i don't know it can be for a folk artist it can be for like a um but somebody who sang in tamil in this sort of template of like songs is going to get a grammy which is going to give us the leverage to um an entry point right? yeah see the thing is see these gana or any folk form is like any folk form in like africa you yeah. know like yeah. it's that it's it's just the same thing but there are the people between us and them are like blocking this from happening so we have to create those middlemen it's it's a business strategy only but people might say oh it's wrong no it's good like screw that no we need the middlemen to help us give us that leverage to take this music like say abroad and take this form work with other artists from other you know some collaboration should happen then only these things can happen but if 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 i think if the scene if they all fight, if people all fight together fight and they just its ego takes over then um, it'll be tough but i'll still be in my pursuit i'll whether people are coming with me or not people are going like the problem is they need vision artists need vision they don't uh, that's the problem they have they don't have vision because it's they get too diverted by social media like the hype no hype around social media and all of these things and they don't understand like like not whatever around you if you truly believe in your art if you truly like nothing can shake you some your peer might become rich your peer might become popular but that doesn't matter you have been this is your journey keep going forward in your journey do not look the other side keep on being honest to your art your art in yourself yourself yeah yeah uh, so you um, like just touched upon that uh, idea of okay when we go with an instrument somewhere the instrument as um, a view right from in people's thing how will street music and basking uh, really help uh, in in breaking this see basking or uh, street performance see like i i initially brought the idea of basking here to you know with the mic because i couldn't afford to pay the artist so i told Uh, you can either pay money or some sort of like gift because the private exclusive thing it is fine but see busking we need association like that without an association you cannot do something like because what if something happens to that person mm. like some some person some drunk guy slaps yeah. them or something like that humiliates them because here like if you whoever you are if you go on the street and perform one out of those 10 people will call you a kutadi and like uh, in a very derogatory way and like push you away so for none of those things to happen we need to have an association to protect that person we need people in that association we need a board to sort of be like in case something happens to protect if okay. without this protection we cannot 
like it's tough it's too difficult street or anything because otherwise like what if they get arrested what if uh, they are labeled for something else and they get arrested people should be the do you know thing even the gana artists um ev- like this is the biggest problem they face they'll finish kacheri at like some 2 2 am or something 1 am 2 am and death will happen they'll finish the kacheri and come they'll cops will catch them they'll have to go to police station and then they have to come out mm. okay this is not like um this rare occurrence this, this is regular i'm mean, every month i deal with a police case like one magistrate i have to speak one thing i have to speak one police officer i have to speak or some something has to happen uh because like this is the caste marker class marker all everything intertwined together because yeah yeah we are it's very you clear. it's you like you would have done it come stand there or you're like one you you may do it in the hypothetical hypothetical itself they get arrested yeah. so now what do you do for something like that right like when a gana artist historically this is what they've been doing performing at funerals even they are still being labeled and still being pushed to you know um like this sort of like they have interferences in performance but for them to even get some sort of respect in their area or, ev- or anywhere else is if they f- accomplish something in cinema mm. otherwise they do not get any of that respect so so yeah it's it, it's it's i feel not just gana ga- like folk music itself uh, if you take folk music sumana they get arrested like randomly they get arrested for like um you know I, i why why is this happening what is this happening we are not even dealing with those uh, um you know metrics itself but for all of these things to change i feel even in folk music there's like 3000 sangams like one person hates the other person forms another one forms another one forms another one forms another one forms this is there in folk music but in gana not gana also like two three sangams are there but they are not like united or anything like that there's no benefit so the government needs to come in and sort of like uh, streamline this so that there's some you know there's some sort of like benefit for everybody because they need some pension at least i mm. at least for that pension cash some something even for independence see the film industry the the film music association run they 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 run in a way there's pension going for these uh, musicians, musicians who right so like what about if you see most gana artists by 40 45 they've already they, they turn into like a, they go become a watchman or like uh, most of the blue collar jobs and they, half of them are drunk because they they lost what they had imagine like any cinema artist can, can you know at least like 7 out of 10 uh, artists who hit their peak or like so have some sort of like um what do you say like some sort of like fame or money um they'll know how to sustain it eventually like doing some mm-hmm. small projects at least mm-hmm. but here there is nothing, nothing so they have to drown and die yeah. this is even for folk musicians and that's why folk music is not able to evolve is because uh, because they are the, the main street musicians yeah. because children are not taking it up eng appa vandu idu vaasikkarar eng appa vandu adu vaasikkarar eng this these things will not let them and folk music is entertainment is farming and that will die in, in eventually see it's 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 it's, it's, it's very connected. it's very micro 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 you have to you have to it's all connected so if we don't support the current sustaining one we will not have the second one so i don't feel like right now okay the busking idea is nice for like you know these young kids in chennai are doing this um in tina everything mm. i completely support it go for it but i feel like people have As some sort of we have to evolve yeah so we have to some so, so much more and i appre- i mean i'm not dismissing the idea it's like great please can you do that so yeah. uh, Tenma saved a lot of uh, like forgetting art and forgetting the art form and all that. Tenma saved a lot of young people, right? Who saved Tenma? Tenma was saved by uh, I would say two people only. Um Tenma was saved by Paranjit, Tenma was saved by Paul Jacob. <laughs> both pass. <laughs> uh both I would say one um is a very brother Ranjit and me is like a brother support. with paul and me is like a father son uh, relationship only uh, these two people sort of really uh, as human beings they sort of like um they saw what i was doing and they really push 
like see he doesn't have to sign me for like a his sixth film right he's such a big filmmaker and he doesn't have to sign something like but he believed in me he's seeing that and uh, he took me in you know i signed my first film with him when i was like still broke only but he gave me that uh, he gave me that privilege like you know money and all of those things and made me uh, in a better situation today if i'm driving a car it's because of him and uh, that sort of like help he's done for me uh, like he made me work and you know like i got paid for it he didn't gift me anything uh, the only thing he gifted me was my my confidence that i can do this with paul i think paul also i'm with ranjit and paul it's like i met them in 2017 uh paul also was like paul became a mentor that the only person i ever listened to with ranjit also i fight and sometimes i won't listen to him and he knows that as well but like with paul i completely i i do not fight with him i listen to him because he's somebody who's actually done this before me so how important uh, is mentorship and mentor to have a mentor for an artist it is really 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 important to have how do we seek a mentor a mentor will come to you really mm-hmm. mentor and mentee it will all happen i'm trust me it will happen if you really think i don't it's just me i think uh, if you really believe if you want and you'll fail i've had like But some few I, mentors i think we have to have an awareness what we have to be uh, having awareness and constantly look out for people yeah. and then it will happen i think i guess it's also knowing what you want to do now what you want to start doing mm-hmm. like see you will get mentors for that specific thing I had like a different mentor for different things different things but I think now in my life with Kashish guy the film and like what I want to do till I die I think uh, with like with Paul I knew the name from when I was 17 mm. but I've never seen the person but when I saw the person I was like I was what like I was uh, I was at I was 30 30 years old and when that happened I was um, you know I felt like it it was a relationship which slowly was building and which i knew okay this is this person is there for me but i do have like other people who i sort of seek guidance from with regards to finances or with regards to just my own personal development mm-hmm. but there is always the alpha mentor <laughs> so i don't know with mentors i think you if you want it will come to you they because they will also um, you have to open up first yeah open up open up and see this that for that style and for that a teacher is ready when the student is uh, confirmed a, a teacher is born when the student is ready right yeah, yeah. yeah definitely i think even like uh, paul was a mentor for many people i think with me he's become more of a i would say that uh, he did this he did with chennai sangam he did with like a lot of things so his life inspired my life to become better another question it's a personally i have this question uh, so for an artist uh, making art should be the uh, you know first um, uh, priority or a revolution is should be the priority being truthful is a priority actually everything else will follow you do the art the revolution all do not think like revolution will happen when you decide to break the status quo when you are uncomfortable with the status quo your art will break that status quo like cast is collective i'm telling you cast is collective i'm i'm coming back to the same example is because cast is collective changed the way we looked at gana mm. it's it's a very normal word now the last 5 years 4 5 mm. years mm. it is coming from privileged mouths it's coming from like you know like uh, people who are uh, white people we've we've had like two documentaries about us the the language has changed because i focused on the art we focused on the art we were like no everything else remove everything else remove truth 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 true to the art form true to the art form mm-hmm. and after that if you see even super singer and all they're gana artists were wearing suits where is that idea where was that idea born it was in kashish gelter that's the first time a gana artist wore a suit on stage so if something like that can happen i think uh, it's a healthy thing right mm. where uh, um, like with some some channel as powerful as vijay tv changing the framework you know how empowering course, it yeah. is for like uh, grassroots level artists for them to um, you know perform mm. like it 
like until that point people thought lungi is the attire of ghana but now it's like suit and like it's all like yeah it's it it makes it more powerful right and people are wearing suit people are wearing like sneakers and all of these things and slowly it will change it slowly it change so i feel the art if you work on the art the art will do the revolution beautiful 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 hey uh, i it's it's an amazing conversation then i think we can go on and on <laughs> <laughs> um so thank you so much and thank you. Uh, you know i i i really love what what all you're doing and then we are also big in you know mentorship and uh, we want to really really uplift so many people in terms of photography so if you see any chances if you see any opportunities where you can you know uh, pull us in and uh, help people in you know becoming a photographer becoming a cinematographer we would love to do and uh, thank you so much for so much for coming sure. here it's it's a wonderful opportunity you have an amazing place and such a great vibe first of all thank you really really amazing i hope like more amazing things happen to you guys and uh, more amazing things happen here thank you know I, i i really want to come back again again and definitely i'll uh, there's a lot of kids who want to become cinematographers mm. and photographers but they don't have a camera Building. so um, they just and they don't know what to do uh, how it's still the phone or they borrow the phone and use it but it'll be a good uh, experience definitely thank so you so thank, much thank you thank you